brothers and sisters in Christ. Today is the 17th Sunday after Pentecost, and this morning, God tells us to patiently bear your crosses. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. Amen. May you have grace and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Our sermon text for today is recorded in Isaiah chapter 50, verses 4 through 10. The Lord God gave me a tongue like the learned, an instructed tongue, so I know how to sustain the weary with a word. He wakes me up morning by morning. He wakes up my ears so that I listen like the learned. The Lord God opened my ear, and I myself was not rebellious. I did not turn back. I submitted my back to those who beat me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out my beard. I did not hide my face from disgrace and from spit. The Lord God will help me, so I will not be disgraced. Therefore I have made my face hard like flint. I know that I will not be put to shame. The one who will acquit me is near. Who can accuse me? Let us take our stand. Who can pass judgment on me? Let him approach me. Look, the Lord God will help me, and then who can declare me guilty? Look, all of them will wear out like a garment. A moth will consume them. Who among you worships the Lord and listens to the voice of his servant? Anyone who walks in darkness and who has no bright light, let him trust in the name of the Lord and let him lean on his God. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Dear Lord, we know that we have sinned and that we continue to do so daily. And yet you have made it so easy for us to receive forgiveness. Please help us to show the same mercy and, lo and loving forgiveness to others, which you have shown to us. Amen. My dear friends in Christ, help is something which is rather elusive. If you really needed help for something, to whom would you turn? The answer to that probably depends on how you picture help, or on what kind of help you need. If you think of help as being something positive and useful, you might turn to someone who is considered to be an expert, someone who would have the answers to your particular problem. But if you view help as being something harmful or negative, you might not even ask for help at all. Many people are like that. They think that there must be something wrong with them if they have to ask for help. They might even quote as a Bible passage, God helps those who help themselves, even though those words and that kind of attitude aren't in the Bible at all. In fact, God's message is just the opposite. God helps those who can't help themselves. And it's a good thing, too, because that's exactly what we are people who can't help ourselves, people who would be lost eternally without the help of our God. Most often that help comes directly in the person of our Savior, Jesus, and our example in today's text is no different. As the chosen servant of the Lord, Jesus brings help. Help for us, bringing us eternal salvation, but which resulted in death on the cross for him. Through the prophet Isaiah, Jesus tells us that our help comes from the Lord. He helps us to listen attentively, and he helps us to bear persecution patiently. The Bible gives us many examples of people who had a hard time listening to what the Lord said to them. Let's start by taking a look at Moses. For 80 years, Moses had wanted to be the leader of God's people. But for the first 80 years of his life, God had said, no, not yet. And then, when God finally said that it was time for Moses to take that leadership role, Moses replied, Please, Lord, I have never been eloquent, either in the past or more recently, or even since you started speaking to your servant, for my mouth and tongue are slow and clumsy. Please, please, Lord, send someone else. So the Lord told him what to say, and even provided his brother Aaron to be the spokesman for Moses. And then there was Jeremiah. 
God had chosen him to be a prophet too. But Jeremiah said, Ah, Lord God, I really do not know how to speak. I am only a child. But God told him, I have now placed my words in your mouth. Look, today I appoint you over nations and kingdoms to uproot and to tear down, to destroy and to overthrow, to build and to plant. God gave him all the wisdom and courage he needed to listen to his word and to follow his will. Our help also comes from the Lord, but we need to be listening alertly, attentively, and obediently, or we run the risk of missing out on what the Lord is saying to us. There's great value in learning the art of listening, and it only requires two things from us. One is that we are alert, and the other is that we are attentive. Webster describes alertness as the state of being watchful, active, and ready to do battle. That would mean that alert listening is being mentally prepared ahead of time for something which is about to be said. It's coming with an open mind, expecting to hear something important. Quite often we fall far short of that. For example, how alert are we when our husband or wife has something to say to us? Are our minds prepared to hear their words? Or are we so preoccupied with something else that their words just sound like background noise? And how alert are we when it comes to listening to our children or grandchildren? Do we give them our full attention? Or are we too caught up in our own personal interests to actually listen to what they have to say? And for all of us, as students of God's Word, did we come here today expecting to hear something worthwhile in our worship service? Or are we just being seat warmers? It's so important for us, especially to listen to God, to take advantage of the many opportunities we are given to hear and study His Word in worship and Bible classes. God says that when we put Him first, He will take care of all our other needs, both, both physical and spiritual. So, when our lives are falling apart and the world is collapsing all around us, let's be sure we're listening to God's Word and following it in our daily lives. If we have prepared ourselves to be alert listeners, then we will also be attentive listeners, and we won't miss out on any of the important words spoken by our family members, our friends, or even our God. Listen again to what Jesus said. The Lord wakes me up morning by morning. He wakes up my ears so that I listen like the learned. The Lord God opened my ear, and I myself was not rebellious. I did not turn back. Notice that the entire listening process begins with the daily care which is provided by the Lord. He wakes us up to listen every morning. And he tells us that the person who listens is learned. Or wise. It's only after we have listened that we'll also be able to speak with wisdom. That's the way it was with Jesus' chosen twelve. They were disciples, students, followers who needed to listen and learn. They sat at the feet of the Savior for three years, and only then did Jesus send them out to preach and teach. Listening is important especially listening to our Lord and his word. But these words which Isaiah recorded for us are actually the words of our Savior. And Jesus serves as a perfect example when it comes to being alert and attentive listeners. He said about himself, The Lord God opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn back. Turn back? From what? Jesus goes on to say, I submitted my back to those who beat me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out my beard. I did not hide my face from disgrace and from spit. Jesus shows us here that he is in control. Even as he was confronted with the most contemptible and disrespectful of actions, Jesus was able to endure them all 
And, and he was willing to endure all kinds of disdain and abuse, the, the spitting, the mocking, the, the whipping, and the taunting. Jesus was willing to endure all this and even more, including offering his perfect life as a sacrifice on the cross in order to save us. Jesus was willing to endure all of these horrors because they were all a part of God's heavenly plan. Jesus listened attentively to that plan, and he perfectly obeyed his Father's will. I think it's also important to point out the attitude of Jesus throughout all of this persecution. Our text says, The Lord God will help me, so I will not be disgraced. I know that I will not be put to shame. The one who will acquit me is near. The Lord God will help me. Jesus was totally confident that no matter what was thrown at him, help would come from the Lord. And that confidence enabled Jesus to offer his back and his cheeks and his beard and his face to his persecutors. That confidence enabled him to make his face hard like flint, to grit his teeth, to be totally determined to carry out the Heavenly Father's plan of salvation no matter what level of persecution he would have to suffer. That same strength and confidence to be able to bear persecution is also ours. At one time or another, persecution comes to all of us, and it's only by imitating the attitude of Jesus that we can expect to be successful in patiently bearing persecution. We need to attentively listen to God's word. When we think that we're at our wit's end, we can still endure, because our help comes from the Lord. God has not and will not leave us to fend for ourselves against our mortal enemies. He has already taken care of our greatest need by providing us with full and free forgiveness for all of our sins. So he certainly won't desert us in any of our other needs either. As the Apostle Paul told the Romans, he who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also graciously give us all things along with him? Trusting in Jesus our Savior, we have everything we need, no matter what the circumstances. Our help comes from the Lord, the Lord who made heaven and earth, the Lord who conquered sin, death, and the forces of Satan himself. Our God has no equal, so we will always be safe in his protective care. May the Lord always help us to listen, to listen attentively to his word, and to patiently endure the persecutions which come from this evil world. Amen. The peace of God which surpasses all understanding will keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Heavenly Father, who has justified fallen mankind through the suffering and death of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and has declared the same by raising him from the dead, we praise you for your grace and mercy. We could never justify ourselves in your sight. No matter how much we try, we are still sinners. Even our righteous deeds are filthy rags in your sight, tainted by our many sins. And yet we come with boldness before you, because we trust in your Son, knowing that through him there is complete forgiveness for everyone. Dear Jesus, we know and confess that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. By humbling yourself and becoming obedient to death for our sins, you have rescued lost sinners like us from certain destruction, and have provided us with a robe of righteousness cleansed in your blood. Comfort us and give us that surpassing peace which comes from knowing that we are justified and saved by you. Spirit of truth, we bless your holy name because you have awakened our hearts to receive Christ personally through faith so that you might make forgiveness and eternal life ours as individuals. Continue to fill us with your grace. Keep us steadfast and true in our trust. 
Enable us to bring forth the fruits of salvation, good works, to the glory of our Savior. Amen. We join in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen.